so happy to have Sergeant Mike Fisher with Metro uh, Nashville Police Department here to talk to us about personal safety and pretty timely with what's happened in recent over the last you know couple of months in Nashville. Thanks for coming in. Good Sergeant to be here. Fisher. Thank you. Should we be alarmed? Of course, you're scared when you hear news reports about these senseless assaults and murders. Yeah, that, of course, it's, that's always going to have that impact on the community that people are going to be uh, one, the, how tragic these events were and, uh, and people are going to be shaken up. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, it's a, a good reminder that, uh, you know, we always need to be aware of what's going on around us. Okay, we, we hear the reports. Mm -hmm. And it's probably um, accentuated even more, obviously, with Facebook, with social media, right. constant posting, mm -hmm. and you have your neighborhood groups that put out alerts. Um, on one hand, that is a good thing. Right. The awareness is a good thing. Absolutely. But the flip side of it, um, you, you worry about a little bit. Yeah, so if you look at actual crime data and look at the actual numbers in terms of total part one incidents that happen across the city. Because uh, every week we meet on Fridays and we go over all those numbers. So if you look at the historical data, you can see that the overall number of crimes is going down when you go years, years back. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out of the East Precinct, and I mean, just one example, we keep setting records every year in residential burglaries. That it's, it's every year we beat that record again in it's terms declining. of- It's declining. But the thing is with the social media discussions on crime, you're right. There's there's this enhanced sense of awareness because everybody is talking about every single crime that happens in their neighborhood. You could get a package stolen, stolen off, off your, your front porch, and everybody knows. Bicycle stolen. You mentioned that exactly. Yeah. But uh, what that also can do is create like this false sense of because everybody knows about everything that it's never been this bad before, and that's simply not true. Now you take a tragic event, and then data is absolutely insignificant. You know, a, a tragedy is just that. So the data it really becomes irrelevant because it's going to have that impact on a community. So what really are the most common crimes you're seeing in the city right now? You know, one of the issues that doesn't matter what precinct area you live in that we're all struggling with is the uh, vehicle burglaries mm -hmm. because that's just such an easy target and cars are everywhere. And easy to prevent, right? Yeah. For and the most part. You know, what's even more disconcerting for us is one of the things that we've been seeing in East Nashville alone since the beginning of this year, we've had over 50 firearms taken out of cars mm -hmm. and a lot of those vehicles were unlocked. And, and people have to understand that that's a crime of opportunity. A lot of times it's kids just checking Absolutely. car doors mm -hmm. and uh, they go into a car thinking they'll get some money and now they've got a gun. So what opportunity do they have now in terms of what crime can they pr uh, commit? What are you telling people when you have these neighborhood association meetings mm -hmm. and you go out and speak sure. to people often, that's part of your job, right? Exactly. What kind of, what, what kind of feedback are you getting from them? I mean, if, if the cars are locked, right. that's another story. Right. You know, they're not just open targets. Right. You know, you, you get a lot of frustration because a lot of times folks go, man, I, I swear I locked my car, but, you know, there's absolutely no evidence of it being broken into. I will throw this out because a lot of times we, we get this kind of pushback. Well, I saw on the Internet you can get these devices that will capture, you know, that, and they can, they can capture the signal and open your car with it. Those exist, but we have never made an arrest with somebody that had one of those on their person and never recovered one. Really? It's, it's predominantly, it's folks leaving cars unlocked. Uh, we're not seeing mm -hmm. any evidence of, of anybody using some kind of uh, device to s circumvent the security features. All right, so that's a common sense thing right there. Um, would you say the, the majority of, of neighborhoods that you go speak to, obviously you wouldn't be there if they didn't have some type of neighbor, neighborhood watch program, but um, do we need a lot more of them in town? Do you think that would help? Well, event. I, I tell you kind of the mindset that we've got out of the East Precinct is not so much we're advocating for neighborhood watches, because I'll tell you what happens. If you have a, say you had a spike of vehicle burglars in your neighborhood and everybody goes, hey, we need a neighborhood watch. And you form a group up. And then when things kind of level out or go away, so does the group. Mm -hmm. So we advocate that people establish neighborhood associations. And crime and safety is just one part of it. But then you've got overall quality of life discussions at those monthly meetings. You know, you might have public works there, you might have uh, your, your council representative there. So we do come in and talk to them about safety or issues that we're seeing in their area, but then there's a broader picture and that keeps those uh, neighborhood associations kind of sustained for the long run. All right, 
lighting around your home. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Sure. Do you think that is also a big deterrent? Absolutely. If there are, they used to have events, I remember, uh, where they'd have the national leave your front porch light out sure. on, uh, sure. those, those type of things. Does that deter crime? I do believe so. Good lighting, uh, making sure that your landscaping is well maintained. It doesn't get mm -hmm. so overgrown mm -hmm. that it gives somebody a place to hide. Opportunity. And we tell folks, if you've got an alarm system, put a sign out and advertise it. Put stickers on your window. If you have cameras, advertise it. Because at the end of the day, you know, criminals are pretty lazy. So if I'm walking down the street and your house is well lit and there's not a lot of places for me to hide and there's signs for cameras, signs for alarms, but the house two doors down has none of that, that's an easier target for me to go after. All right, we talked uh, before the show started about just awareness, mm -hmm. always being aware, aware of your surroundings. Right. And you talked about you personally, when sure. you get off late at night, and a lot of people work odd hours. Absolutely. They have to go grocery shopping, or they uh, may have to walk their dog, and it's late, it's at midnight sure. or 1 a.m. So they're gonna have to be exposed to some degree. Sure. What do you do? So, you know, what we, we want to instill in the public is, one, we don't want to make people think we're trying to make you paranoid by, by saying these things to you, but we definitely want people to get into the practice of having just a baseline of situational awareness, always being cognizant of what's around them. Um, you know, one of the examples I give is when I'm coming home at night, you know, when I get a good half a dozen to ten houses away from where I live, I want to start scanning around the neighborhood and seeing who's out and about because you're going to recognize all your neighbors but if somebody's out of place or specifically if you notice somebody that appears suspicious and seem to be watching you really intently that should set off some warning bells going who is that and why are they paying so much attention to me and, and that may make you go maybe i shouldn't pull into my driveway just right away i was going to say then what should you do sure. don't approach them right right you know we want people to call us uh Another reason why we kind of steer away from terms like neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. We don't want people out patrolling their neighborhood or confronting people that are suspicious. Call the police department, let us come check it out. And if it's nothing, it's that's totally fine. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've been called out for meter readers. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, <laughs> yeah. hey, there's this guy in the bushes <laughs> yes. next door to my neighbor's house, and okay. it's, it's the person reading the meter. And that's, mm -hmm. that's fine, that's a good thing. Uh, we would rather go out on 20 of those than somebody be reluctant to call us when there's a problem. All right, Sergeant Fisher, thank you so much. I know there is a uh, the non-emergency number. Absolutely. Let's give, it, give that to us again. 862-8600. 862-8600, good number to have next right. to your phone or on your person at all times. That's a, that's a good number to have handy. Thank you so much Absolutely. for what you do protecting us. Oh, it's good to be here. All right, thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back with a lot more after this.